What is the most boring hobby a person can have? Before we start with the first story, please hit subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated with us. Story 1. Using magic erasers to clean grunge and dirt off of anything and everything. Hand me a pack of them and I will have the entire house looking like it was just built. I literally don't stop until either I run out of erasers or if I'm told to take a break. My boyfriend said he watched me for hours straight scrub our railing on our stairs and couldn't understand how I wasn't bored by 10 minutes in. I didn't even know that much time had passed. Story 2 Reading obituaries in order to cross out the names in the phone book. My dad used to do that, but it was more to lament the people that passed away that were the same age as him or younger. He would do this out loud every morning until my mom convinced him to stop ordering the local newspaper because it was driving her nuts. Story 3. Involuntary Collections My grandmother had a bunch of white porcelain cats when I grew up. Later I found out the only reason she had them was because people kept giving them to her thinking she collected them. She just didn't want to be rude. I once had two piggy banks and had them on display on a shelf. People thought I was collecting piggy banks and started giving me for my birthday, etc. Within a few years, I had more than 100 piggy banks. Fortunately, my brother was teaching at a school for disabled children and he could use some trophies. The piggy banks were well received. Story 4 My mom always tells people this or that about my personality that's not even true. Oh, Derek just loves me rubbing his scalp like when he was a child. In fact, I hate it. Oh, Derek's always been scared of clowns. My favorite movie is it. My Derek should have been born in the 70s. I like Frankie Valli and the BGs. Anyways, it's like habits she's made for herself to put upon me. Thank you for the renting opportunity story 5. Having no hobbies is the worst. Hobbies make people interesting. I'll never forget a girl I worked with was upset because her boyfriend broke up with her and she said how she's always bored because she didn't really have any hobbies. Then she asked me what my hobbies were and I listed them. She's replied with, those are all dumb hobbies. I just replied with, those are some big words for someone who doesn't have a hobby. She pretty much immediately realized it was a dumb thing for her to say. Story 6. Judging people. That's my mother's hobby. Whether in real life people, internet people, actors, reality TV shows, she believes it 100% not scripted. She judges the crap of them. Just walking to the mall, and there she goes pointing at strangers and judging them and telling to me, sister or brother, what she thinks about them. Like me and my siblings don't give a crap. Such a pathetic and boring hobby. Story 7. Complaining. Seriously, some people make it their hobby to report people doing nothing or complaining to managers about trivial details. It's their hobby because they do no other singular interesting thing. They're bored and just complain for fun. Edit, thanks for the silver. I feel like you just called out the entirety of Austria. Story 8. Pins are not just for holding pieces of cloth together. At least in Angmoreport pins are something worth collecting. In this city over 27 million pins are produced per year by the combined workshops called pinneries. Among them are specials like wax-headed, steels, or silver-headed. Lapel pins, or blazons, do not count since they are not true pins. Mere needles are looked down upon as just faux pins with a hole knocked through one end. Nails cause strife. Dave refuses to have them in the shop, citing as his reason the fact that some collectors are young boys. Thank you very much. Story 9 Every hobby is subjective. To billions of people watching another human being kick or throw a ball is practically a religion. If you've not part of that religion though it seems utterly absurd and a complete waste of a life. Same is true of stamp collecting or kite flying or whatever hobby is that is fascinating to some but utterly pointless to others. What's interesting is how diverse human beings are in terms of what they can become passionate about. Story 10 Hot Take I'm incredibly jealous of people who deeply enjoy things most people find mundane and tedious. There are people out there who love accounting really love it, not just say they do. They love keeping things organized and tidy, particularly when it comes to things like finances and spreadsheets. It brings them joy. 
And that joy can quite literally earn them hundreds of thousands of dollars a year because everybody else finds it boring. Now, how about you? How much cash did you make with your normie hobbies, watching Breaking Bad or Squid Game? Did you make a killing playing through the most recent Dark Souls? No? Me either. Sounds to me like the dude who loves organizing finances or the gal who digs tidying spreadsheets is the real winner, to me. Story 11 In my opinion, the only real answer is one you don't have any interest in. It might seem like the most boring hobby to someone who doesn't like it, but it can be really exciting to those who do enjoy it. Like stamp or coin collecting, for example, I have no interest whatsoever in it, and it seems boring, but growing up my best friend's dad collected coins, and one day, as a gift for everything he did for me, he did so much to help me growing up it's like he was a second father to me, I gave him a coin that had been in my family for a very long time. The coin was from the early 1800s and it was in mint condition so I gave it to him and I have never seen a grown man so giddy before or since because it just so happened to be the final coin he needed to complete a specific collection he'd been working on for almost 30 years and he was absolutely over the moon about it. So I think every hobby, no matter how boring, is only boring to those with no interest in it, but to those who do, it's a wonderfully entertaining hobby to them. Story 12 the O'Filler Alistair read one noon in the library, I watched a man imagine, filling in O's, a little, rumpled nobody of a man, who licked his stub of pencil and leaned over every O with a loving care, shading it neatly, exactly to its edges, until the open pages were pocked and dotted with solid O's, like villages and capitals on a map. And yet, so peppered, somehow the book looked lived in and complete. That whole afternoon, as the light outside softened and the library groaned woodly, he worked and worked, his oh-so-patient shading descending like an eyelid over each open O for page after page. Not once did he miss one, or hover even a moment over an A, or an E, or a P, or a G. Only the O's oodles of O's, O's multitudinous, O's manifold, O's italic and Roman. And what light on his crumpled face when he discovered, as I supposed odd words, like zoo and ooze, polo, oolong, and odontology. Story 13. Watching sports, including esports, I know this one is going to be unpopular, but this is my personal experience. Anytime someone talks about their hobbies, be it cars, makeup, fashion, coins, anything, I can really engage with what they have to say. But anytime I hear someone talk about sports, my eyes completely glaze over and I'm incapable of enjoying what they have to say. I know there are people who can't actually play these sports, but for the most part, one just can't understand getting joy out of watching someone else play games. Story 14. I can't honestly think of a hobby that wouldn't be at least a little bit exciting. Bird watching? What if you come across a really awesome, rare bird? Stamp collecting is actually pretty fascinating, especially when you factor in the history around each stamp. Knitting is stereotyped as dull, but I've seen some wicked projects done by talented knitters. I actually love fishing, since it gives me time to hang out with people I like and if we're lucky we bring home a meal. Yeah, I don't think hobbies can be objectively boring. If it's someone's hobby, then it's not boring to at least one person. Story 15 I remember back in university, my statistics professor Proof Reed published statistic books in his spare time looking for errors. Whenever he found one, he wrote a lengthy letter to the publishing company. Don't get me wrong, improved editions are a big deal in science and education world, but this man kind of got his kick out of his pressure's findings. He kept copies of them in a folder what hobbies instantly make someone more attractive to you. Story 1. Cooking. Not for the whole make me a sandwich woman thing, but because I love someone who loves making wonderful things that I can so directly praise them for. Art is another one, but I can't eat most art. Sometimes after I cook myself a really great meal, I find myself really hot. Then I remember that I'm depressed and shouldn't feel that way and enjoy my meal, lol. But seriously, I love cooking and if I could cook at the pace I do, I would instantly make it my job. But that hectic cooking is nothing for me. I need it to be peaceful and almost meditative. Story 2 A beautifully presented meal is art. My wife and I both enjoy cooking. My style is Mexican, 
Thai, Italian, and whatever is available goes into a cast iron skillet. Once in a while I make eggs Benedict. She cooks Japanese and has more patience and sophistication with seasonings. She always says my presentation is beautiful and takes photos. I laugh because I think her cooking is the best and her presentation is fine. I like to cook for her friends and visitors so she can relax with them. She does the same for me. So, happily married. Story 3 For me, any hobby can make a man more attractive if he's enthusiastic about it. I once went on a date with a guy who does scuba diving, and he went on and on about the different types of tropical fish and other shallow water sea creatures. He talked about their behaviors, which species were invasive, which species were great to eat, and went especially in on Hawaii state fish, the reef triggerfish. He was so interesting, I wonder what he's up to now. Story 4 Writing If they can string together sentences that jump out of the page, or if they just have a particular way with words, I find that really attractive. As a writer, I can say it is a deeply unattractive practice. Smiley face Shower, dressing well, eating right, not our strong points. Think days old sweats, lots of caffeine, unwashed hair. IDKY, but it's typical, especially when the words are flowing. When they aren't, it's the same but with more crying. If you're lucky, there's procreate cleaning happening. Story 5 Art I don't care if they're bad or good, just doodle or sculpt statues. They materialize their inner beauty into something material but priceless. As an artist who makes furniture and sculptures, I love that I can literally enfold someone with more than just my actual body. When someone sits in my chair or under my light installations, it's like I am wrapping myself around them and it feels really intimate. Story 6 Personally, Nature Hiking I love going out and observing nature and wildlife. I had the best hiking club everyone was very considerate of other hikers level of ability and would make sure people didn't get stuck on hikes they couldn't handle especially with new members level of difficulty was included in every hike announcement and there were hikes for all abilities we'd all carry bags to collect any trash we saw on the trails and raised around two thousand dollars a year just from collecting cans we had hiking picnics in the snow i miss my club now that i've moved edit the $2,000 our club got from collecting cans was always donated to a local nonprofit land trust to preserve our local ecology. Story 7 Avid Reader I am a big reader, and I don't think less of someone for that, as long as they're not that I don't read LOL, that's lame type, especially if they still like learning otherwise. Had an ex who never read but was brimming with knowledge from documentaries and random articles. It's just an extra bonus for me if someone does love reading, especially if we can enjoy discussing things we've read. Also, he'd still show interest in what I was reading and listen to me talk about the plot. I think you don't have to be into each other's hobbies, but showing a bit of interest will get you some kudos story 8. People are saying instruments, but specifically guitar for me. Something about a lady playing guitar. This absolutely worked in my husband's favor when we first met. I grew up with a lot of rock and metal music so I naturally became attracted to many lead guitarists. When I met my husband, he told me he played guitar and played for me on our first date. We'd already had a great time at that point, we had dinner first before going back to his place and his playing was just the cherry on top. Story 9 Dudes building stuff So incredibly sexy. I dated a guy who would customize his motorcycles. I wouldn't have thought this was something that would be so sexy to me, but I mean he would custom design things to the point that if he decided he wanted a different seat, he cut the metal form, shaped the padding, bought a sewing machine, and taught himself how to sew leather upholstery. He needed to CNC some of the parts so he just built himself a cheap and cheerful CNC router. Story 10 Interested in philosophy or just curious about things in general? To have existential discussions. I don't know about you, but I get so tired of the blank stares I get back when I try to talk to guys, most people actually, about anything that isn't superficial crap. It's nice when I find one like you speak of. Helps me work through my understanding of some things, like human nature. 
There needs to be a healthy sense of humor too though. Story 11 A man once tried to get flowers delivered to me and found out he couldn't because I live in a rural area in the middle of nowhere. So he learned to make intricate origami flowers, sprayed them with perfume, boxed them up and sent them. The originality, time, and effort he put in really got my attention and we were together for over a year. Stellar human and taught me, before it was all over the interwebs, the meaning of if he wanted to he would. Story 12 So many hobbies can make a woman more attractive to me. If she's into baking, playing guitar, hiking, camping, biking, running, day trading, she isn't afraid to travel, watches anime, plays board games and card games stays in shape by staying active and eating well more often than not like snowboarding or skiing surfing basketball football golf tennis volleyball gymnastics dance if she is a dj that's also pretty cool photography video editing coding stand-up comedy story 13 crafting especially with a sewing machine that tells me you have patience and are willing to work on something long term but it also means we're going to have a million threads all around the house in the middle of a project. And so much fabric slash many spools of threads slash tools slash etc. Source, I am in the middle of making a dress and there are tiny black threads everywhere. Why do I have 150 spools of thread? I have a pot big enough to sit in just to dye fabric and probably like 15 measuring tapes. Pins. Everywhere don't walk on the carpet barefoot when I'm sewing story 14 my husband likes to cook his repertoire is limited and it's nothing fancy but what he does make us always amazing watching him put the effort and time into making my birthday dinner every year makes me love him even more and on the off chance I mention something he doesn't know how to make as long as it's not too complicated he always gives it a try during the lockdowns, I was sad that we couldn't go out for our annual prime rib dinner date for Valentine's Day. He found a recipe, bought a roasting pan and meat thermometer, and made the best prime rib I've ever had. Story 15 Intellectual endeavors, history, science whatever, or being handy slash artistic, also physical stuff can be, but like, just being part of an adult sports league casually bc it's the sport you played in high school is not what i mean that's actually kind of boring to me more like any physical activity that shows you've got some sense of discipline or self-care about you someone who cooks or otherwise thoroughly enjoys food wine etc picky finicky eaters are incredibly unattractive to me things i don't like and maybe even am surprised and had to learn through experience playing instruments I am not a big live music fan and so I don't care to watch you play an instrument. Also singing's great, you can sing. When I dated men that could sing they sang all the time. Honestly I enjoy a bunch of no talent fools on a fun night of karaoke far more than watching someone show off singing. What's an inexpensive hobby most people can get into? Story 1 Citizen Science Record the plants and animals around you even if it's stuff you find in your backyard or the local park and share it online. Many sites connect with GBIF, which allows scientists to use the data in their research and just learning more about the nature around you can be an interesting and enlightening experience. I've had some of my bee wolf photos cited in a research paper have been contacted about collecting seeds and mites for researchers specializing in those areas and have been contacted about potentially finding a species new to science. In 2015, scientists recorded 30 new fly species from Los Angeles backyards, so even urban areas can yield interesting finds. On top of that, it can be a lot of fun to learn about the differences in things that look the same and the relationships between organisms. Story 2 I collect the rubber bands the postman drops, and now I have a rubber band 18 inch across. All free, all mine. I once found a huge rubber band ball about the same size as yours in a defunct office building. My friends and I took it to a long straight road in my convertible. We got it to about 120 miles per hour and threw it straight up. I didn't get to see it as well as the others because I was driving but it quickly disappeared as it bounced behind us and all the rubber bands went flying. Story 3 Fixing Stuff 
Most things can be taken apart with a cheap screwdriver set. Grab something of yours that broke, pull it apart, and try to figure out what's wrong. Researching how to pull things apart, how they work, and what causes them to break is free. If you fix it, you've just saved yourself money from having to replace it. Worst case scenario, you can't fix it and you're back where you started. I grew up on a farm and we were always having to fix things. Later, friends thought it was so cool that I would diagnose and fix stuff. Now my wife considers it manly and attractive. Both of my kids have tools and I encourage their curiosity about how things go together and work. It's so fulfilling and helpful. Sometimes it's better to replace things, but if you tinker, you'll feel way better about it. Story 4. Learning Knots. It's not 100% free if you actually make things, like bracelets, guitar straps, etc., but it doesn't hurt to learn a few knots. Just buy some paracord, go on Animated Knots, com or some other knot tutorial website, YouTube works too, and start tying. This is something I've been meaning to learn for 20 years. I have about 5 knots that I use for different things and they all work surprisingly well for my level of ignorance, but I would like to be sure a knot will hold when slash if I really need it someday. Great recommendation. Story 5. Origami. All you need is paper. There's also tons of tutorials on YouTube and crease patterns available online for free. Most people think of cranes and boats when they hear origami. Please look up Eric Joizel, Robert Lang, and Satoshi Kamaya to see examples of how complex models can be. Origami is an especially good hobby for those who like solving puzzles. The satisfaction of completing models is very similar to solving a puzzle. Story 6. Reading. Library is free if you return books on time. Just for some clarification, not all public libraries use Libby slash Overdrive even though it is very popular. RB Digital, Hoopla, and others are also used. If anyone is interested, stop by your friendly local library CERT desk and the staff will show you all of the options you have. If you're lucky, your library pays for Canopy which is chock full of foreign films, documentaries, and classics. Basically, we should all be making use of our libraries and supporting them when voting Story 7. I am very good at spotting things from being homeless. If you look, there is pretty much usable neat and free stuff everywhere to make projects. Also, juggling, yo-yos, soccer, basketball, baseball or half all if you are in Philly, just adventuring in general with no absolute goal. Get used to a lot of walking and make sure you're properly equipped with what you will need or learn the older methods of telling time. Rewarding and useful. Story 8. Hiking if you have a comfortable pair of walking shoes and the ability to get to a large park, walking is pretty cheap and relaxing due to COVID. This is what many people are doing now. Depends on where you're living. Since I'm from Hong Kong, most hiking spots are so crowded which can spoil the relaxing mood. It's still possible by waking up very early and hike before more hikers come. You can spend a medium amount of money on a backpack and boots, but a freebie string bag from an event or whatever and a pair of trail rated running shoes like ASICs will do just fine. Wear non-cotton gym clothes and you're set. Story 9. Sketching, writing, rock collecting, nature collecting, wood carving can be expensive, but you can also use a pocket knife and some basswood. Cell phone photography if you already have a cell phone edit, close my parentheses go get a book on life drawing and anatomy by Bridgman. Start watching life drawing on YouTube. Sketch every day. Try not to erase too often and use light gestural strokes while you're getting your basic structure down. The eventual dark lines you'll use to nail the final line will make the gestural line seem meaningless, but it'll get you where you need to go. But you should draw every day. You'll eventually want to draw every interesting looking person you see and it may lead to some weird staring. Try not to do that though. Story 10. Exercise. You can do plenty of routines like crunches, squats, push-ups, sit-ups and jogging and not spend a cent beyond a decent pair of shoes for jogging in. I bought some dumbbells from Walmart for like $60. The kind you can remove slash add weights to. 
I actually got pretty strong with those, but they only go up to 40 pounds. I had good pecs, a six pack, great shoulders, muscular back, good biceps, and good legs. All with push ups, leg lifts, pull ups, jogging, and every dumbbell workout you can think of. It helped my confidence and sleep schedule a lot. Ended up getting promoted at my job, and I bought a pretty cool weight set. I have a 400 LB deadlift and enough muscle to where I don't really care if I get bigger now. 6 Minute Mile Story 11 Cooking can be a pretty cheap hobby. I mean, you have to eat anyway, might as well enjoy the processes of making your own food. I got an instant pot a while back, no I'm not a shill. It works great for me because it is far more consistent than I am. Between that and an ancient Griswold cast iron pan, I can make a decent meal. It might be cheating a little, but I'm eating better food and saving some coins. I learned in culinary school I can get all the ingredients for French onion soup to feed a family of six for like $20. Produce and ingredients are super cheap if you cook from scratch story 12. Learning Despite having a fairly good degree, I found the ability to learn through mediums like YouTube to be invaluable and free. I have access to more subjects and direct access to specialists in their field without having to be in a university theater. The internet is beautiful at times. There are a number of top tier universities that have online lecture content for free. I've listened to more lectures on more subjects over the last 10 years than I did when I was in university. For free. Story 13. Drawing. Reading. Writing. Singing. Photography, even with just your smartphone. Running. Hiking. Bird watching. The list goes on. I didn't realize how exciting bird watching is until we bought a house near a nature conservation center. Holy crap. I'm now researching which food and feeders attract which birds and have a stellar jay that eats peanuts out of my hand. I love watching those flighty hippity hoppity. Story 14. Tabletop RPGs. You can spend a ton or as little as $15 for infinite fun. You can start pretty cheap, even free. Books can be found online. There is an app called Masterwork Tools that has most of the Pathfinder stuff for free. You can get a cheap set of dice online or download a dice roller like the Easy Roller RPG Dice app and print a free character sheet online or download the Path Builder app for a digital copy. You can start Pathfinder for free then once you get trapped by it you can end up like the rest of us spending hundreds of dollars on new books, have like 20 sets of dice that still isn't enough. A custom painted miniature for every character you create and books from editions long past that your group will probably never touch again once you get the newest edition but you just can't bear to get rid of them. Story 15 Geocaching One of my fondest memories is trekking through the forest with my friends on the hunt for a geocache. It was early summer and there was a light drizzle that you didn't really notice beneath the trees. We spent hours looking, got lost a few times, named a few landmarks, found a hidden pond, discovered some awesome walking trails we'd haunt for the next year or so, and finally found the geocache. After signing our names on it, we decided to break trail up the ridge and came out onto a field. We could see where we parked the car. We wandered in a giant circle. That was the day Mike was no longer allowed to be the navigator. Which hobby drains your bank account? Story 1 I used to play Magic the Gathering, but I switched to cocaine. It's cheaper and less addictive. The place I work sell MTG cards and all varieties of Warhammer, plus other less expensive TCGS. Every time a kid comes in for their first set, I tell their parents that at least they know what kid is spending money on and what they'll be up to at the weekend. I ask the adults if they're applying for a new mortgage to fund the addiction story too. General Aviation Flying For a super quick drain, own your own plane. Pilots talk about Aviation Monetary Units, AMUs. An AMU is $1,000. It sounds a bit less costly to say to the wife that the avionics upgrade was only 12 AMUs. Everyone who wants to try flying but doesn't have that amount of money or wants to find out if he likes it can try gliding, flying sailplanes. 
It's a lot less expensive, often organized in clubs, and you don't need your own plane in a club. Over the course of five years, I paid maybe three, five K for it, license and gear included. If you go to a school, it's going to cost a lot more, but a club really makes this easy on the money. Every smoker I know pays more for cigarettes than I paid for the best hobby I ever had. Story three, cars. Gaming is like a cheap distraction to the auto hobbyist. If your hobby is fixing cars, the initial cost of tools can be steep, but after that, you are saving money hand over fist. If I have the time, nothing I enjoy more than spending a Saturday saving $1,000. As a car dude, I enjoy cars in various aspects. I have a project car I mess around with and modify. I also have a daily routine that runs fine, which I also mess around with. It's indeed expensive. The comments about fixing cars or driving being boring are very interesting as it shows how people view cars as appliances, which they are, and not a hobby. Story 4. Boats and Boating Like most of the things in this thread, this one doesn't have to be expensive, but you do need to spend a bit of money up front to get a good one to make sure it doesn't become expensive for you. If you buy a boat that has an outboard motor and you can trailer yourself and it's in good shape with no rotten sections or cracks in the fiberglass that is probably the cheapest kind of boat you can buy even though up front it'll probably cost you 20 grand you see a boat is basically just a big fiberglass shell provided nothing compromises the structural integrity then it will basically last forever this is why getting an outboard is important Inboard engines suck to work on and God forbid it ever needs to be replaced you're gonna shell out a ludicrous amount of money to do that. With an outboard you just undo four bolts and the whole thing comes off and you put a new one on. It's pretty common to see 40 or 50 year old boats that are still perfectly fine but have modern engines on them for exactly this reason. Story 5 Horses I have four and a miniature horse and two miniature donkeys. The three minis are whip smart and would thrive in the mountains or the desert or a vacuum. The four horses, on the other hand, have spent their entire lives trying to own a live themselves. Outfitting for and traveling to horse shows, trail and obstacle course competitions, and camping slash trail riding take almost as much money as their hay, feed, vet, teeth and feet. They eat much better than I do. And I'm on a fixed income, social security, military retirement, and disability. They are my life's blood and my number one source of joy, but I often wonder what I was thinking 20 years ago. Story 6. Warhammer. As someone who recently got back into it, I feel like it's really not that bad. It's a pretty big upfront investment, but really not terrible. You only need a handful of paints for under $30, some primer for like $10, some nice-ish brushes for $25, some model building stuff like glue and clippers for another $20, and a starting box of models. The combat patrols are going for about $145 on Amazon. Once you have that stuff, it's going to take you hours to assemble and paint easily between 50 and 100. So for the cost of a fancy dinner, you're getting literal days worth of entertainment. From a dollar to time investment, it's cheaper than going to the movies. Story 7. Watch collecting. I am not proud of it, but I covet these little ticking marvels of engineering. I am constantly fawning over watches in excess of $1,000. There is no excuse. It's blatant materialism and consumerism. The worst part is, the types of watches I collect, mechanical, are less accurate than a $5 quartz watch. It's a sickness. The grass isn't greener. I'm currently wearing my quartz Cartier tank and also have a quartz tag Carrera, and am constantly reminded by my GF that my Apple watch is more accurate than both of them. Those are probably my last quartz ones for a while, I've got my eyes set on Monaco next. Learn to restore vintage mechanical watches, and now I think I spend more on tooling than the watches themselves. It's super satisfying though, and a great hobby to get one through the bleak English winter evenings. Story 8. Collecting Vinyl. Just spent $90 on chocolate and cheese by Wayne. However, I do have a local record shop that doesn't use Discogs prices. Just got first pressing, mint, media anyway, permanent waves for $8. 
and that's how I get most records, so it's not too bad. But my wife would completely agree with your answer to OP's question. There's a record store near us that has $1 or $2 sales every other month or so. We always manage to find about $50 to $100 worth of albums every time. Some of them are ones we genuinely seek out. Some are no longer printed, and I think they should be preserved. Story 9. Magic the Gathering. I recently sold out. Got about 15k cash. Took a little vacation. Bought a dream guitar. Bought an upright bass. Getting a tattoo from an artist I've wanted work from for years. Bought my wife a tattoo and some skates. A few dates. Still going to have several K left for other hobbies as they arise, but I have no regrets. I would look at my epic collection like, wow, this is cool. If only I had five to six hours to go hang out at a card shop every week to use it. But I didn't really like the people and I didn't have that time. I do have time for a random hour here or there for music, writing, reading, exercise, etc. The big realization was that I just had different priorities than when I had started collecting years before. I'll look back fondly, but never buying cards like that again. If I did buy any cards, it would strictly be a single competitive deck for the season and sell at the end. But I have no desire to do that now. Story 10. Knitting and crocheting. Quality yarn is expensive. Add sewing to the mix and you've got me. People suddenly start giving you sewing machines and then you become a hoarder. I'm currently trying to find the time to go through some other stuff to make room for an older deceased relative's thread, etc. Can't say no because I don't want to have to spend $200 on thread over the next 10 years for all my projects. Instead, as I said, I'm a hoarder now. Story 11. Skiing and snowboarding. Honestly, this one depends on where you live. If you don't live close, then absolutely. If you are a local, you pay for a season pass and can hit the slopes 20 to 30 times in a winter. If you have to travel and don't have your own equipment, then holy cow, that adds up quickly. Taking my family of four to Maribel, the cost of flights, lift passes, lessons, transfers, accommodation, etc. and school holidays is crazy. Trying to keep the budget below 5k, which just seems insane to me. Story 12. Photography. Depends on if you're doing it primarily because you're chasing gear, or if you just like making images. Too many people think that better gear means becoming a better photographer. Not true. They just give you more latitude for executing a vision, but if you have no vision to begin with. The difference with the other hobbies in the list is that you can more easily get paid for your services or make money selling your shots. It's harder to make money gaming or skiing, for example. Story 13. Triathlon, specifically Ironman type distance, is crazy expensive. Whenever I mention I've run marathons and I'm not a bad swimmer, they're like, you should do Tris. Except the bike is like $5,000 and now you need a place to swim and the race fees start at like $600 and there aren't many of those races out there so you have to travel. Everyone who does this is like a retired dentist or taxi suite with money to burn. Story 14. Knitting. For real. Would I pay $200 for a sweater in a store? Absolutely not. But I would gladly drop that money on supplies to make my own, and then never wear it because it's so ungodly expensive and can't really be washed and I'm terrified of spilling something on it. Story 15. Dice making and also 3D printing accessories and other things to go with the dice, which are intended for tabletop role playing gaming. I make dice out of resin and molds out of silicone, and they last about 15 to 20 uses before I need to make a new mold, which isn't terribly expensive, but it takes a bit. I have a box of dice from sets that didn't turn out and make jewelry and keychains from those. They sell really well. I'm learning. 3D design and modeling and have some basic dice towers and rollers I 3D print to sell. They go over well. I don't sell my STL files, I have them on various websites for free. I go through about a gallon of resin a month, plus pigment, mica powder, glitters, etc. for dice. I constantly buy filaments for my printer because they're so much fun to use. 
I also print cards for packaging and stuff. I do knit too, that can really drain my account also. What hobby is easy to start, but also very rewarding? Story 1 Website Goodreads has a reading challenge. You can track your progress. I've actually read 15 books in 3 months, just because I love seeing my bar go up. Also, reading is supposed to be good for you or something like that edit. Goodreads is set up similar to Netflix. There are rating systems and further reading suggestions. You can read and write reviews, join book clubs, make internet friends who like the same novels, and more. Kind of like a social networking site for book lovers. Story 2. Cooking. Tons of easy recipes to start with, and food is something you can impress anyone with. Anyone. I do wish I could learn how to cook. I live at home and my dad is the designated cook. Every time he goes into the kitchen he always leaves a big mess, so if I wanted to make something I would have to clean his mess. My other issue is I don't have anyone to teach me how to cook. My dad doesn't teach. He will just thrust cooking upon me and then take over when I ask what the heck I'm doing. My mom makes very complex things so that gets frustrating to remember. I need some simple place to start so I can learn from there. Story 3 Biking, chances are you learned as a kid, get back out there. It is still fun. And the reward comes from exercise, being outdoors, getting to places, not using gas. One thing I would recommend is to take a day off, wake up early, grab some friends and go out for a long trip on the bike. Spend the whole day if you can. It's great. You get exercise, fresh air, nature, get to see new places, talk a lot with your friends, and it's very relaxing. It's the best feeling in the world. Story 4 Seriously, you can make the most basic stuff and people will still act like you're some kind of chef. I went to a Thanksgiving potluck a few years back. I was in charge of bringing the mashed potatoes. I bought a bag of red potatoes, have them, boiled them, drained them, mashed them, and then added just a bit of salt, butter, and milk for a smoother consistency. I was getting compliments all night. It was like nobody at the party had ever had real mashed potatoes before. Story 5 Refurbishing Furniture Buy an old piece of Craigslist or somewhere for cheap, sand it down, strip off the coating, and paint or stain it. There's something about taking an old piece of junk and turning it into something that looks brand new. I actually did this a couple days ago to an ugly looking end table. Now it looks amazing and beautiful and I have this awesome sense of accomplishment from it. All my furniture in my apartment aside from my bed, couch, and lounge chair, I got for around $100 to $150 total. I have redone coffee tables, end tables, shelves, a bookcase, a storage bench, and a kitchen table slash chairs. All bought at thrift stores or on Craigslist. They look pretty good, and each time you do it, you get better. One Men's Trash Story 6 Crocheting or Knitting The beginner stitches are so simple to learn, and you can see your project growing, so you feel productive. Also, you are actually producing something when you're sitting around watching a movie or something. Also, you can save money on gifts and winter supplies because you can make them yourself $4 for instead of spending $20 at a store for a scarf. Also, there are so many stitches to learn that it's hard to get bored. Once you master one, you can move on to a new one. Also, you can do it pretty much anywhere. Public transit? Passenger in a car? Grabbing coffee with friends? Got a particularly difficult poop to pass? Anywhere you can read it, you can crochet, basically. Story 7 Board Gaming Modern board gaming is undergoing a renaissance. If you meet up with an existing group, the cost is basically gas money. You get to play games, meet new people, and learn stuff. And there are several levels of games, easy slash gateway games, next step games, etc. to accommodate your experience level. Modern board games can be a little pricey at first, but as you get into the hobby you can figure out how to manage costs. There's a lot of good game recommendations in the comments below. I've highlighted some of them above, but anyone who is interested should read through them. 
The games I listed above are specifically gateway games, so they're relatively easy to learn and have high replayability. My favorite games are ones that probably require a little more experience, but Twilight Struggle. Story 8 I heard that geocaching is fun. I think that I'm going to start it. I've been geocaching for years and it's definitely one of my most rewarding hobbies. Just go on your phone and download an app for it and see what there is most major cities are covered with them. So if you live in one odds or you'll be amazed to see there are one or two down the block in the local park. If you find something in a geocache BTW, the rule is trade even or up. 99% of the time it's little toys for kids kind of stuff, but I always keep one or two dollar store items on me just in case I find something I want. Seriously, it's great fun and you learn about all sorts of neat places in your neighborhood you didn't know about. Also really great when traveling to learn what favorite spots the locals have. Story 9 Many Instruments I picked up a new ukulele with nice strings, a good hard case, and an electronic tuner for under $90. Took about three hours to get the strumming down, and since then, it's been quite a lot of fun learning more. I've played bass and guitar for years, and I decided to buy a cheap ukulele a few years ago just for of it to see if I could pick it up easily. I never knew how much fun I'd end up having with it. Best 20 bucks I've ever spent. I think I'm ready to invest in a proper one now that I have an idea what I'm doing. Story 10 Homebrewing It can get a little pricey at first, starter kits can be $80 to $130, but that often includes ingredients. It is very rewarding to share homemade beer and wine with friends and family. I've been homebrewing for a few years now. Awesome hobby and a lot easier than people think, especially when using kits. I never know what to say when someone asks, can I come help you guys brew? We pretty much just stare at a pot for several hours and get drunk on the last batch. But you're welcome to join us for that. Story 11 Cross Stitching I learned in half an hour and it's so rewarding to see completed projects. I never thought I would like it this much. And you can design your own patterns really easily too and feel totally badass about making awesome stuff for your wall i've just finished a big map of westeros with sigils all around the border i love cross stitching so much i have depression and it really helps when i'm feeling down you can get pretty creative with the things you can make too i've already made heaps of magnets but i'm looking to make key rings and patches to sew onto stuff too story 12 Archery can be a very fun thing to do. You can get a nice bow for about $150, and there are archery ranges all over the place where you can rent a bow and get lessons. It's pretty easy to learn, hard to get good at, but it's incredibly fun to put an arrow to a string and see it fly into a target. Also, other people have mentioned this, but the ukulele is insanely fun. I picked one up for around $30, and I've been teaching myself a ton of random, easy songs for a while. It's a lot of fun. Story 13. Woodworking. It gets super advanced, but to start with a hammer and nails and free pallet wood you can make your own furniture. I love building, sanding, staining over the course of a day while listening to audiobooks. Great and calm weekend afternoon, and you get something out of it. I'd say woodworking is super rewarding, but also not easy to get started with. There's a very limited number of things you can do without dropping a considerable amount of money on tools, and working with crappy tools is majorly frustrating. Even if you forego power tools, hand tools are still pretty pricey to get decent ones. Story 14 Learning a language can be a fun way to interact with a new friend or a visitor from another country. It can start with simple conversational topics such as hobbies and whatnot, and that's a very exciting way to get to know someone. On the other hand, language acquisition can be tough if you aren't able to practice with another person. The first few hours slash weeks, depending on how much time you put in, is very rewarding because you go from knowing nothing to being able to say full basic sentences in hours. Story 15. Make your own beer. It seems daunting at first. Sure, you'll need to buy a little equipment up front, but you can make two cases of whatever type of beer you want for like $40 bucks tops, much cheaper than getting two cases at a package store. And it's fun to watch it ferment. 
and it's even more fun to sit and drink a beer that you made. There really isn't a lot to it. Boil water. Add hops and fermentables. Cool and yeast. Then wait for delicious beer to happen. Extract kits make it 500 times easier. The reward is beer, people. Need I say more? What hobby in men gives you green flag vibes? Story 1. Actually read or well versed in a topic that comes from genuine interest and not egotistical gain. Sexy, attractive, whatever. I'm a straight guy and though I may not care about the topic, I'll be under a spell if I listen to someone rambling about something they're genuinely passionate about. That's when our natural human magnetism comes in. It's awesome, I manage people for a living so I need to have lots of small conversations and try to find ways to get to know people at work to show I do care about them and I don't take them for granted. I love discovering something about a person that they care about especially because Reddit over the years has given me a shallow knowledge about so many different topics and hobbies that I can usually use that to work in a good question or respond in a way that shows I care and am interested in what they have to say. All of the random crap I've read here genuinely helps me which is nice and something I never thought would be the case lol. Story 2 Every animal shelter is about to be full of depressed, sexually frustrated dudes. I volunteer at an animal shelter and it's 100% women. Both the actual employees and the volunteers. I've volunteered at this for years and at multiple shelters and it's literally always women. I've never met a single man at any of them. I do work more with cats so that is maybe why, but still to not have ever seen even one man is crazy. Story 3 Take care of another living entity, be it plants, pets, or peers. 100% how I landed my wife. I came from out of town to help a friend and his wife who were having a baby by cooking and cleaning for the last week of the pregnancy. They dragged me over to a friend's place who had invited them over. The hostess is now my wife after I approved of her library. Story 4. I knew someone in college whose hobby was restoring old books, like classics he found in a Goodwill or that had been handed down and were well loved. He would repair the glue, trim down the weathered edges of the pages, etc. My mind was blown and to this day, I wish I had talked to him more about it. Edit, apparently this is the red flag of AM word and I'm out of the loop LMAO so guess you'll see me in the news after being abducted by a stalker who likes book story 5. Gardening and caring for pets or small animals. My husband just bought a MHC, which I've been told stands for Madagascar hissing cockroach, but I believe actually means crap cockroach, into the house. Long story, but he had always wanted one and the thing basically popped out of someone's laptop into his arms. I was not happy at first, but after seeing how he cares for even the most disgusting animal you can imagine, it just confirms that the man is all love and kindness. So we named her Cookie, and I will admit I'm starting to feel some affection for her. Story 6 100% reading edit. Guys, if a girl degraded or made fun of you for reading, you totally filtered out the trash. And no, reading Reddit doesn't count. I'm not a very social dude, but I somehow got a huge reputation as a major cool party guy just by hanging out at the lower key bars in college and reading by myself. Eventually somebody always comes up and tries to figure out why you're ignoring everybody else. It was bizarre. The real reason was that I lived with my parents to save money and I didn't want to spend all my free time at home. Story 7. So it looks like the top 3 are books, pets slash gardening, and carpentry, i.e. desire to make yourself better, desire to nurture and take care of others, and life skills. Gentlemen, your weekend project. Build a bookshelf and stock it lots of books on pets, gardening, and DIY skills. Pro tip, buy used books so it looks like you've actually read them. By the way, this list is pretty accurate. I asked my wife and she was quite impressed that I had built a bookshelf and that I could cook a meal during our third date. Story 8 First time my boyfriend came over to my place, we'd only been going out with each other for a couple of weeks, the cat came sprinting down the hallway to investigate who this stupid new human invader was, and how very dare I not alert him to his presence, cat skids to a halt, gets scooped up and was fussed over for a good half hour or so. That's a major green flag that they love animals. 
Not so much when they then bloody ignore you for 10 minutes every night when they get home from work to fuss over the feline overlord and tell them all about his day. Story 9. The very first time my now husband, Ken, came over to my apartment he and my cat bonded like they were soulmates. My cat has been a cranky old man since the day he was born. He hates new people in his home and will generally spend the entire time rage hiding in the closet. He especially dislikes men for unknown reasons because I've had the little bee since he was four weeks old and he's never been mistreated by a man. I walk in the door, followed by Ken. The cat appeared out of nowhere and instantly latched himself onto Ken like they were old college buddies who hadn't seen each other in years. We obviously had no choice but to begin a serious relationship and ultimately get married. My cat, who I raised since before he should have been separated from his mother, who I have loved and cared for for 15 years, would push me into a wood chipper if he thought it would get him more snubbles from my husband. Story 10. It's about balance. A man who let's say, golfs, but not every single weekend, loves live music, but doesn't live in a bar. Watch sports, but not attached to couch, being active and open to learning new things. Extra points for being handy, that's hot. I used to make hobbies my identity like I thought I was the most badass rock climber for 20 years. Never talked to my non-climbing friends again, dated only climbers, held back my career, etc. I cringe thinking about it. I still enjoy climbing and many other hobbies now, but no single one will be my identity ever again. Story 11 Enjoying Nature I was in a long-term abusive relationship, and he made me get rid of the dog both times I tried to add one to our life, didn't care about watching birds with me, didn't care to help with any landscaping stuff. I'm now one year into a wonderful romance with a man who has outdoor hobbies, watches baby animal videos on YouTube, and just bought a house and is delighted in watching birds show up to the feeders he put up. I can share my nature with him, and it's fantastic. Story 12 Coaching youth sports, especially when he is a busy professional. It isn't about glamour and adulation. It's also a personal sacrifice for the betterment of children. It's noble and at the same time very sexy. Oh, how interesting. My wife hated that I used my Monday evenings for coaching and Sundays for game day for our daughter's team. She always felt left out despite being encouraged to come along. She never does. Story 13. Most of them. Probably not overtly sexual ones. Porn's not evil, but I would question a man with a mammoth porn collection who considered it his hobby. Certainly staying within the budget is necessary. In a relationship that's usually where friction comes from, if there is any. And balancing your hobbies with relationship time is important as well. Sure talk all about your book, your film, your woodworking, but don't forget there are other topics. A man who can entertain and enrich himself is a jewel among men. It adds to the relationship, it helps a man with his emotional and mental health. Collect coins, go backpacking, watch the stars, support your team, dig in the garden, get greasy in the garage, raise rabbits, foster cats, learn a foreign language, bake, volunteer to teach old folks how to use tech. Be happy. Story 14. Genuine interest in his hobby, whatever it is. It's so obvious when a guy has adapted a hobby or character trait because he wants to pick up women. Like knowing four chords on a guitar, but not having the interest to learn anything more. Also, having a genuine interest in teaching you his hobbies, cheering you on and getting exited when you outlearn them, instead of just shoving them down your throat and talking about how knowledgeable he is while simultaneously gatekeeping said knowledge story 15. According to my so, cooking a wide range of things and actually enjoying it. I will admit, I started putting effort into cooking because I didn't have money to eat out. So I developed a routine where I got some cheap wine and cheap ingredients on the weekend, then played mad scientist in the kitchen, marinating, baking, and cooking food for the whole week. Apparently I've gotten good enough that her interest in eating out has decreased. Oh yeah, and doing it all in an apron and nothing more apparently sets the mood. What hobby is an instant red flag? Story 1. Gambling. 
Being in a state where we went from NO casinos to a couple Indian owned ones, to state licensed legal ones, to allowing in person sports betting, to now having online sports betting too, man, the number of people, particularly younger PPL, I see blowing a significant amount of their life and income on sports betting apps is nuts. I knew of almost no one with a gambling issue 20 years ago, and I personally witness a lot of issues now. Thankfully, I don't have the gene. Does nothing for me? My father and wife will sit there all day pushing a button if I let them. Story 2 No joke, my college professor used to be close to this gorgeous girl he met in his job, and suddenly she's gone and he never mentioned her again. During a chit-chat, he reveals that she likes to snap pics of animal dung for fun and shows them to her friends including him. This girl I was in class with and studied with, one of the hottest girls I've ever seen, we later ended up matching and texting on a dating app. But before, one of our teachers, whose office was in the study area, would always go into his office for way too long. And like every day. Usually the door is always open, even other students, but not when she was in there. She always had the after glow, hair messed up, satisfied face, etc. It might as well have been a walk of shame. Story 3 Don't know if this is a red flag, but I'm a permanent hobby seeker. I'll join groups, buy equipment, spend thousands, but then find the next thing I'm interested in. I'm in a constant state of hobby acquisition with a limited lifespan. I'm talking pianos, guitars, motorbikes, boats, go karts, bows, huge fish tanks, table saws, welders, car hoists, broken excavators, and I'm just getting started. I do love my dogs though, they are the only constant rewarding hobby. I guess this is a red flag if you don't have the storage capacity. Story 4 I've heard a lot of people say that horse girls are crazy. One of my best friends starting from high school was a horse girl. We stayed close friends up until she got married when we got around 30 years old. I met up with her for lunch one day and casually told me she tried to stab her husband in a fit of rage. I never knew she had it in her. What made her flip her lid you may ask? She married a horse trainer and he accidentally hurt her horse one day. Story 5 It's not quite as mysterious as some make it out to be. Horses are huge pets that are an enormous time and money sink to own. Basically, if you're going to have horses, you're going to mold your life around horse ownership rather than adding a pet to your life like a dog or cat and making adjustments. You'll need a barn, fields, fences, hay, a trailer, a truck to pull the trailer, shoes, vet stuff, tech. Basically, deciding to own horses means devoting most aspects of your life to it. And that few aspects that won't be devoted to it are the most inconsequential ones, like your choice of dinnerware. Story 6 Probably not having hobbies Everyone should have something that they strive for and make them happy to put in the effort. You're not a bad person if you have no hobbies, but I bet you're not as happy as you could be either. Sleep is not a hobby. Eating shouldn't be a hobby. Researching, mapping, and touring local or exotic restaurants could be though and so is cooking. Story 7 My ex had zero hobbies. It became exhausting to be with her because she was constantly looking to me to entertain her. When we were off work or both done with work for the day, she was glued to me. If I wanted to do something I enjoyed that she did not like or could not participate in then she'd complain. So I was stuck in a constant state of trying to find things we both enjoy. We were together for three years. When we broke up the next day it felt like a huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders. No hobbies is definitely a red flag. Story 8 Astrology I've learned to accept it in my social circle of friends the reality of life is that if you look too hard at the truth of science and fact, it makes people so uneasy that for a lot of people, it's really best to deny the reality of our situation for the time being and enjoy life while we can. I'm in a state of deep acceptance that we're messed very soon, and I tell my friends that I don't believe in astrology, but will gladly talk with them about it. Honestly, astrology gives some people a way to make goals and to be hopeful and to not get stuck in thought loops of despair. It's one of the most attractive leaps of faith belief systems out there, because let's face it, not everyone has the fortitude to believe in nothing and still go about their days without letting it get to their mental health. 
and it's usually better and less manipulative than organized religions or a cult. Story 9 Personally, even though I love MTG and Pokemon stuff I am weary when I meet people who like the hobby as sometimes they are just the worst. For example, I was getting a box from the celebration set in a Walmart. I saw it and it was one my partner and I had not seen yet and wanted to open for fun. A dude behind me was also waiting on getting boxes and started talking to me. He was getting like five of the Ebbs, the last of them really, and he smelled so bad, like someone left a pepperoni stick under a couch for a year and then took it and used it for deodorant. I was dying. People stared at us so hard at the checkout area because he would not go away. I honestly didn't know whether to feel bad for him or vomit. Story 10 Dissecting animals that were people's pets, aside from doing it to make taxidermy at the owner's request. Jeffrey Dahmer did that with dead cats and dogs that he'd find in addition to other animals like raccoons, rabbits, possums, and other types of roadkill. I dissected a dead piglet once and didn't really mind it, plus it was at school for anatomy class. It smelled like old ham that needed to be thrown away. A couple boys played jump rope with their piglet's intestines, and all I could think was, dude, seriously? I just treated the whole thing as if I was performing a surgery or an autopsy, cause of death was unknown for the pig I was dissecting, but it was likely a stillbirth. So I just acted very clinical and professional, did my assignment, and got on with it. Story 11 Trash TV I'd consider it a hobby as it's a very specific form of entertainment that people follow religiously, and more importantly, people that canonically follow trash TV. It's actual brain rot. Don't get me wrong, seeing a couple minutes of 90 Day Fiancé can usually get a chuckle out of me, but it loses its charm real quick. I've watched exes get legitimately mad at it, and put them in a bad mood for hours. That is not a healthy activity. Same could be said for some people's emotional football escapades, and I would agree. Story 12 Coming from somebody who used to play old school RuneScape religiously, I would definitely be cautious with somebody who plays MMOs. First of all, many people spend absurd amounts of time playing those games, like I did. Second of all, an unfortunately high number of MMO players have toxic personalities, which is something nobody really likes to talk about, but it's true. Third, MMO players often pair their playtime with drugs and alcohol, which isn't healthy. Now, that being said, there are plenty of people who play MMOs that are healthy, happy people with great personalities and a fulfilling life outside of their game of choice. So I wouldn't call it a red flag to play MMOs, maybe an orange flag, like, be on the lookout for the things I described above. Story 13 Being serious about any of the typical bar games or related stuff. Bowling, billiards, darts, shuffleboard, poker, etc. I'm not suggesting there's anything wrong with enjoying these games with your friends, but on the competitive level it always seems to draw on the most insufferable people. If someone tells me they belong to a pool league, I immediately picture them chain smoking in a parking lot while complaining about their wife. Maybe it's not all of them, but it sure is a lot of them. Story 14 A lack of independent hobbies like reading, video games, sewing, etc. If all of their hobbies require social interaction or the active participation of other people, my immediate perception is that person might not be very self-reliant and could potentially be very needy or demanding of time and attention. I absolutely have time for socialization, but I'm also someone who needs time to myself to recharge. Every so often, I need to shut out the world and just focus on my own thing for a few hours. A partner who is demanding of time and attention to the point where I can't find time to do that effectively would be detrimental to my mental health. Story 15 Overconsumption and consumerism See many recent TikTok and Instagram videos It's one thing to like a brand or a product It's another to try to have as much of it possible And make it your life goal to do so It's a sign you don't have a good sense of self-identity And need this to create a sense of identity That or you're unhappy or unfulfilled in other areas of your life And think this will fill that void Influencers are a big factor in causing this problem, and it's not even so much the consumerism that's troubling it's the comments and the enthusiasm of viewers says their dream or goal in life is to be that way.